When Rebecca and Paul Callahan, a deeply in love couple from Wigan, Greater Manchester, UK, excitedly anticipated the arrival of their first child, they envisioned it as the beginning of a joyful journey. Eager to start a family, they faced challenges head-on, even as Rebecca's pregnancy encountered complications due to an excess of amniotic fluid. This condition led doctors to induce labor, marking the start of an unexpected and harrowing journey for the couple. In 2010, when their daughter Matilda Rose was born, the doctors immediately noticed something alarming. A large, wine-colored mark covered half of her face and extended over her body. Despite the initial shock, Rebecca and Paul's heart swelled with love for Matilda, eager to embark on their new life as a family, undeterred by the mark they believed was just a birthmark. Birthmarks, often seen as unique beauty marks, have been embraced by many, including confident individuals like dancer Cassandra Nove. However, Matilda's situation would soon reveal a far more complex and serious condition. About half an hour after her birth, while attempting to feed, Matilda stopped breathing, signaling the first indication that her condition was more than superficial. Originally dismissing the mark as a harmless bruise, medical professionals quickly realized the gravity of their mistake. Matilda's health deteriorated rapidly, necessitating her transfer to a specialized hospital for intensive monitoring. It was there that doctors performed emergency surgery to remove a problematic pouch in her throat that was hindering her ability to feed. The days following were fraught with anxiety and sorrow for Rebecca and Paul. The joy and excitement of parenthood had been overshadowed by fear and uncertainty. They faced the heart-wrenching possibility of never seeing their daughter alive again as she battled her critical condition. We were overjoyed at the thought of welcoming our baby into the world, and now we were faced with the terrifying prospect of possibly losing her, Paul reflected on those agonizing moments. As they braced themselves for more distressing news, the Callahans clung to hope, a testament to the unpredictable and often challenging journey of parenthood. Their story serves as a poignant reminder of the resilience and unwavering love that parents hold for their children, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Two weeks following her birth, medical professionals discovered that the large mark on her skin was not a mere hematoma as initially thought, but rather an indication of Sturge-Weber syndrome, an exceptionally rare and serious neurological disorder. This condition, which manifests from birth, is marked by a range of severe symptoms including seizures, paralysis, developmental delays, and learning challenges. Further investigations revealed that the distinctive mark was due to an abnormal clustering of blood vessels beneath the skin. It was also found that Matilda was born with two cardiac defects, further complicating her condition. Despite the grim prognosis, Matilda proved to be an extraordinary fighter. Against all odds, she survived a critical surgery shortly after her diagnosis and has continued to battle the challenges of her condition with remarkable resilience. Her parents lovingly refer to her as their little miracle, a testament to her strength and the hope she represents. In an effort to manage her condition, Matilda began undergoing laser treatments aimed at minimizing the appearance of her birthmark. These treatments, which are anticipated to span over 16 years, work by preventing the mark from expanding. However, the process is not without its challenges. Following each bi-monthly session, Matilda's skin bears the temporary appearance of being covered in molds, a side effect of the bruising caused by the laser. These marks, initially more intense and redder, gradually fade away. Paul, Matilda's father, shares the family's distress over the public's reaction to Matilda's appearance. Many fail to understand the nature of her condition, leading to unwarranted judgment and, at times, cruel remarks. Some have even made hurtful assumptions about the cause of her birthmark, questioning the parents' care. Despite the regular, painful treatments, Matilda remains a beacon of joy. Her condition, which extends beyond the cosmetic implications to affect her brain, eyes, and gums, has nearly robbed her of her vision and the ability to walk independently. Nonetheless, with the aid of a specialized walker, Matilda has taken her first steps, a monumental achievement given her challenges. Matilda's life has been a continuous battle against the manifestations of Sturge-Weber syndrome. Yet, her indomitable spirit shines through. She greets each day with a smile and is beginning to express herself through words. Her father describes her as determined and headstrong, qualities that have undoubtedly contributed to her remarkable progress.
Paul and Rebecca, Matilda's parents, are devoted to not only supporting their daughter through her journey but also to increasing public awareness about Sturgeweber syndrome. They hope that by sharing Matilda's story, they can foster a greater understanding and empathy towards those affected by this rare condition. Paul and his partner have dedicated themselves to ensuring their daughter, Matilda, enjoys the highest quality of life possible, celebrating each milestone with joy. As Matilda grew from infancy into her toddler years, Paul turned to the internet to discover ways to enhance her life's quality. By 2016, it became evident that their home required significant modifications to better suit Matilda's needs, prompting them to embark on an extensive renovation journey. Understanding the potential benefits, they were keen to incorporate sensory and wet rooms into their home. Sensory rooms are uniquely designed spaces aimed at stimulating an individual's senses through specific lighting, music, and tactile objects. They are particularly beneficial for children who have challenges with communication, providing a therapeutic environment for them. On the other hand, wet rooms offer a practical solution for bathing and hygiene, featuring a completely waterproof design with a shower area that is seamlessly integrated into the floor level, eliminating barriers for easier access. The financial commitment to these renovations, including the sensory in wet rooms, was substantial. The couple also undertook the project of expanding their home's upper floor and installing a sophisticated home elevator system to accommodate Matilda's wheelchair, amounting to an investment of around $19,000. Paul, leveraging his skills as a builder, took on much of the renovation work himself, financing the project through savings and receiving additional support from the Wigan City Council. The renovation, which spanned over 18 months, was not just about functionality but also about aesthetics and inclusivity. The couple aimed to find an elevator that didn't conform to the typical image of disability aids, something sleek, efficient, and suitable for all users. This was particularly important considering Rebecca's grandfather, an amputee, who would also benefit from an accessible, non-stigmatizing lift solution. Despite the initial challenge of finding an elevator that met all their criteria, their persistence paid off when they discovered an innovative solution online. They found an elevator featuring a self-supporting structure, powered by an electric motor that could easily connect to a household power outlet. This flexibility meant the elevator could be installed virtually anywhere in their home. Choosing to place the elevator in the kitchen, Paul envisioned it as a focal point of their home. To align it with the kitchen's aesthetic, he opted for a striking black finish and diamond plate flooring, making it not just a functional piece of their home's architecture, but a statement piece that reflected their family's resilience and dedication to Matilda's well-being. Through these thoughtful renovations, Paul and his partner have created a home that not only meets Matilda's needs but also celebrates her presence in every detail. Paul and Rebecca couldn't feel more content with their purchase, it has significantly improved Matilda's quality of life. Matilda is unable to communicate through speech or move independently. However, her smiles serve as a powerful testament to our efforts in making her life better. Birthmarks, often characterized by an overgrowth of various types of cells such as blood vessels, melanocytes, smooth muscle cells, fat cells, fibroblasts, or keratinocytes, predominantly arise from unknown causes. It is speculated that they result from a disruption in the normal balance of factors that govern the development and movement of skin cells. Furthermore, it's important to note that vascular birthmarks, which appear red, pink, or purple due to abnormal blood vessels beneath the skin, are not inherited. A substantial number of newborns display a birthmark at birth. Pigmented birthmarks, which include moles, cafe o les spots, and Mongolian spots, result from an excess of skin pigment cells. Intriguing research, particularly by the renowned Dr. Ian Stevenson, delves into children's memories of past lives, linked by birthmarks corresponding to injuries sustained in those previous existences. Stevenson's extensive collection of cases presents compelling evidence where children recall precise details of their past lives, including how they died. One remarkable instance involved a child from India who not only identified her previous life's murderer but also the location of her burial and the murder weapon, including its hiding place. The birthmark on her body mirrored the exact spot of the fatal injury, a pattern replicated in numerous cases, pointing towards a mysterious connection between birthmarks and past life experiences. Despite the fascination, the origins of birthmarks remain largely a mystery, 
with theories suggesting a range of possibilities from hereditary factors to spontaneous occurrences post-birth. Some birthmarks may enlarge after birth and potentially regress over time, while others might evolve into malignant tumors, prompting concerns that warrant a dermatologist's consultation. Capillary hemangiomas, commonly known as strawberry birthmarks, typically emerge a month post-birth, displaying a vibrant red to deep purple color and a textured surface reminiscent of a strawberry. Fortunately, about 90% of these birthmarks naturally fade by the age of 5 or 6. Paul and Rebecca are acutely conscious of the fact that their own mortality will eventually become a reality, underscoring the preciousness of the moments they share and the profound impact of their decisions on Matilda's well-being. Paul and his family had a forward-thinking approach towards aging and their living accommodations. They believed that installing an elevator in their home would be a beneficial long-term investment. Paul explained that the cost of relocating to a more accessible home, such as a bungalow, would far exceed the expense of installing an elevator. This addition would enable them to remain in their beloved home, ensuring they could enjoy their lives without disruption or the need to adapt to a new environment as they grew older. Three years following this decision, the family embarked on a heartfelt project. They initiated a crowdfunding campaign aimed at raising funds for a new wheelchair for Matilda, their nine-year-old granddaughter. This campaign was launched in memory of Matilda's grandfather, who had recently passed away. The family wanted to honor his memory by supporting Matilda, who had outgrown her old wheelchair and required a new one to accommodate her height. Despite her physical challenges, including the inability to walk or talk, Matilda had a remarkable impact on those around her. Her infectious joy and the chaos she lovingly created brought smiles to many faces, illustrating her vibrant spirit and the profound effect she had on her community. The narrative also delves into the topic of birthmarks, explaining their nature and prevalence among newborns. Birthmarks, which appear as discolored patches of skin, can be found on over 80% of babies. These marks may show up at birth or within the first few months and can be categorized into two main types, vascular and pigmented. Vascular birthmarks result from the accumulation of blood vessels beneath the skin's surface and vary in color from pink to bluish, depending on the depth of the underlying vessels. On the other hand, pigmented birthmarks arise from the abnormal development of pigment cells and can range in color from brown to black. Sadly, Matilda became the target of unkind remarks due to her appearance, with some individuals insensitively comparing her head to that of an alien. These comments caused her distress, highlighting the challenges she faced not only with her physical condition but also with societal perceptions. The family's story underscores the importance of empathy, understanding, and support within communities. It serves as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the impact of collective kindness. They invite viewers to share their story across social networks, hoping to connect with others and gather support for Matilda's journey. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there is an another story about a couple's quintuplets. Let's continue. In a remarkable tale of faith, courage, and unwavering determination, Dimitri and Vervara Temkin's journey to parenthood became an inspirational story that resonated deeply with people across Britain and beyond. The couple, hailing from Russia, was overjoyed to discover they were expecting quintuplets. However, their joy quickly turned into a daunting challenge when medical professionals in Russia advised them to consider reducing the number of embryos to ensure the survival of the others. The Artemkins, driven by their strong convictions and faith, chose a different path. They placed their trust in the skilled hands of the medical team at John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford, a decision that would ultimately defy the odds. The Artemkin story captivated the hearts of the British public, showcasing a miraculous outcome that seemed almost too good to be true. The expert team at John Radcliffe Hospital successfully delivered all five girls, Elisaveta, Alexandra, Nadezhda, Tatiana, and Vervara, safely, a feat that many thought impossible. The quintuplets not only survived but flourished under the meticulous care provided by the hospital staff. This extraordinary event caught the attention of the media, and four years later, the Artemkin family was celebrated across all federal TV channels in Russia. They were depicted as a family blessed with five beautiful daughters, a testament to their unwavering faith and determination. Dmitry Artemkin, a high school math teacher, shared harrowing details of their journey, revealing how they were initially met with skepticism and outright refusal from Russian medical professionals. 
They were told that Bravara's pregnancy posed extreme risks to both her and the unborn children, with predictions that the pregnancy would not last beyond 20 weeks. Amidst the bleak prognosis and rejection from their homeland's leading medical center, Dimitri and Bravara sought solace and support in their church. It was a stark reminder of their reliance on divine intervention and the hope they placed in finding help beyond their borders. Dimitri's search led him to Dr. Imp in England, who not only welcomed the challenge but also shared a positive outlook based on previous successful cases of quintuplet births in the country. In 2007, the Artemkins' lives took a dramatic and joyful turn. Vervara, who had initially undergone an ultrasound that revealed the presence of five embryos, faced recommendations from concerned doctors to reduce the number of embryos. The couple, steadfast in their beliefs, declined and trusted in their fate. Faced with the refusal of Russian doctors to manage such a high-risk pregnancy, the Artemkins ventured abroad for the birth of their children. At 26 weeks, Vervara gave birth to their five daughters, who were immediately placed in incubators designed for premature babies. The quintuplets showed remarkable progress, gaining weight and strength, and eventually, they were strong enough to travel back to their home in Moscow. Upon their return, the Russian government gifted the family a four-bedroom apartment, fully furnished and renovated, as a token of support for their incredible journey. The Artemkin story is a powerful narrative of hope, faith in the face of adversity, and the incredible achievements possible when determination meets expert care. It serves as a beacon of inspiration, reminding us of the extraordinary outcomes that can emerge from the darkest of predictions, raising five children simultaneously is an immense challenge that not many can comprehend. Dimitri and Vervara, a couple who found themselves parents to quintuplets, experienced an overwhelming sense of fatigue that only the mutual support they shared with each other and their extended family could alleviate. The realization of having quintuplets, five unique lives to nurture and protect, was daunting at first. However, the joy and happiness these children brought into their lives were unparalleled. The dream of having a large family has always been close to my heart, and I am overjoyed to see it come to fruition. Honestly, managing our household isn't vastly different from any other large family, they shared with conviction. They believed that having a single child could potentially be more challenging due to the undivided attention they receive, which might lead to more frequent bouts of fussiness. With five children, they quickly learned the value of patience and sharing their mother's attention. The quintuplets, named Elisaveta, Alexandra, Nadezhda, Tatiana, and Vervara, each brought their own unique personality and physical traits to the family dynamic. The fourth child, in particular, faced significant health challenges early on, battling frequent bouts of pneumonia and bronchitis but eventually grew stronger. Despite not being affluent, Dimitri, a mathematics professor, and Vervara, a music teacher, managed the financial strain of raising quintuplets with help from a generous local businessman who funded their medical expenses. The birth of the quintuplets was a rare and risky event, with the girls being born 14 weeks premature and weighing between 113 pound ounces to 2 pounds 2 ounces. Each child required intensive care, with a dedicated team of one doctor and two nurses ensuring their survival. Miraculously, they quickly began to thrive, displaying resilience and strength from an early age, as Dimitri noted, they're so small but incredibly strong. True Little Warriors after spending four months in the hospital, the family returned to their home on the outskirts of Moscow in March 2008, ready to start their new life together. The local council provided them with a house, and Vervara decided to leave her job to focus entirely on the demanding task of raising the girls. Before starting school, Vervara received a state allowance to educate them at home. In 2015, the sisters embarked on their academic journey together, attending the same class. Vervara expressed relief and gratitude for this arrangement, highlighting the importance of sibling support, especially when facing the daunting experience of starting school. It's a tremendous comfort knowing they have each other's backs during such a significant milestone, she reflected. The Artemkin quintuplets, now 12 years old, exemplify the fruits of comprehensive development nurtured from a young age. Their upbringing, deeply rooted in the traditions of their faith, includes regular attendance at church, a practice they've been engaged in since their early childhood. This has been part of the Artemkins' broader philosophy, demonstrating through their actions that with the support and love of family, overcoming challenges is within reach. The girls' education extends beyond the spiritual, as they are also learning English. 
To aid in this, their parents have made an exception to their general restriction on television, allowing them to watch episodes of Peppa Pig, which serves both as entertainment and an educational tool to enhance their language skills. Aside from their academic pursuits, the girls are active participants in their church's choir, where they sing every week, showcasing their musical talents and further solidifying their involvement in their faith community. Vervara, the mother, candidly expresses that raising the quintuplets is demanding but incredibly rewarding. She notes the tight-knit bond the sisters share, even though, like any siblings, they experience their moments of conflict. To maintain harmony, they often dress similarly to avoid jealousy, a testament to their closeness. Each girl, however, is encouraged to embrace her individuality, showcasing distinct personalities that range from Vervara's seriousness due to her stature, to Tatiana's ever-present smile. Alexandra emerges as a natural leader among her sisters, a role all of them aspire to, in a household where quiet moments are rare and lively interactions the norm. The family's recent saving endeavor for a trip back to Britain was driven by a deep desire for the girls to reconnect with their birthplace and to recognize the kindness of those who supported them during their early days. Dimitri, the father, sees their daughters as divine blessings and believes their relocation was a step towards providing them with the best possible start in life. He hopes this journey will leave a lasting impression on the girls, instilling a lifelong sense of gratitude for the care they received. Quintuplets, or quints, are a remarkable phenomenon, representing a set of five children born from the same pregnancy. They can be fraternal, polyzygotic, identical, monozygotic, or a combination thereof, with polyzygotic quintuplets resulting from separate egg sperm combinations and monozygotic ones from a single fertilized egg that splits. The occurrence of fully identical quintuplets is exceedingly rare, making it a curiosity among multiple births. Quintuplets can be of mixed genders or the same, depending on their zygosity, with the first recorded all-female set born in the United States in 2015. The incidence of quintuplet births is exceptionally rare, with spontaneous conception of quintuplets being an extraordinary event, estimated to occur in one out of over 60 million births. However, with advancements in fertility treatments, such as drugs and in vitro fertilization, the number of high-order multiple births has seen an increase. Despite the rarity, each quintuplet birth is a unique marvel of nature and medical science, bringing with it an abundance of joy and challenges that I end the quaint town of Shuya, Russia, a remarkable record captured in the Guinness Book of World Records tells the story of an extraordinary peasant woman and her astounding family size. Mrs. Vasilyev, a woman of incredible fertility, holds the record for the most children birthed by a single woman, with a staggering total of 69 children. This account underscores the exceptional cases of fertility among Russian women throughout history. Delving further into the annals of Russian fertility tales, in the year 1755, a remarkable story emerged from Vendusky village involving a peasant named Yakov Kurilov. At the age of 60 and married to his second wife, Kurilov had fathered an astonishing number of 72 children. His first wife, through 21 pregnancies, brought 57 children into the world. The births included quadruplets on four occasions, 16 children, triplets seven times, 21 children, and twins ten times, 20 children. His second wife contributed to the family's remarkable size by having 15 more children, this included one set of triplets and six sets of twins. Another incredible account from 1782 features Fyodor Vasilyev, a farmer from Shumsky County. Vasilyev's prolificacy throughout his two marriages resulted in 87 children. His first wife, in 27 pregnancies, had quadruplets four times, triplets seven times, and twins 16 times, totaling 69 children. The second wife added 18 more children to Vasilyev's lineage, with two sets of triplets and six sets of twins. Impressively, at the age of 75, Vasilyev had 83 of his 87 children still living. The phenomenon of multiple births has held various cultural interpretations over the centuries. For instance, the Mayan civilization regarded twins as a divine blessing, fascinated by the concept of two individuals sharing a striking resemblance, which they believed represented a single soul split in two. However, the birth of twin girls was considered less fortunate due to the economic burden of providing simultaneous dowries. In Greek mythology, the theme of twins arises in the tales of Castor and Polydus's, 
Pollux, and Heracles and Iphicles, showcasing a mix of divine and mortal heritage. Polydeuces and Heracles were sired by Zeus, making them demigods, while their brothers were the mortal sons of their mother's husbands. Similarly, the twin sisters Helen of Troy and Clytemnestra, who were also siblings of Castor and Polydeuces, highlight the mythological fascination with twin births. The reasons behind human multiple births remain largely enigmatic, with a noted increase in likelihood as women age. In medieval European literature, multiple births were sometimes portrayed as evidence of a woman's infidelity, a belief reflected in certain chivalric romances. For example, Marie de France's Le Fresne narrates how a woman's accusation of adultery, based on a multiple birth, leads to a twist of fate where the accuser herself experiences a multiple birth. This theme recurs in Night of the Swan and the Beatrix variants of the Swan Children stories, illustrating how multiple births were woven into the fabric of cultural and mythological narratives, carrying implications of both wonder and suspicion. Her mocking gesture faces severe retribution as she endures the extraordinary ordeal of delivering septuplets. In an ironic twist, her malevolent mother-in-law echoes the taunt back at her before revealing the existence of the children to others. In the Soviet Union, a prestigious accolade known as the Mother Heroine Order represented the zenith of recognition for women who not only gave birth to but also successfully raised a minimum of ten children. This honor was conceived as a part of a broader initiative to encourage population growth and recognize the contributions of mothers to the state. To qualify for this esteemed title, the last of her offspring must have reached the milestone of their first birthday, and all her children were required to be living under her care. This order was officially brought into existence through a decree issued by the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR on July 8, 1944, signifying a significant moment in the nation's history to acknowledge and reward the dedication and sacrifices of mothers. In conjunction with the establishment of the Order of Mother Heroine, distinctions such as the Medal of Motherhood and the Order of Parental Glory were also introduced. This case of childbirth left the medical community in awe. A woman in India delivered a baby boy who, astonishingly, had his parasitic twin, lacking lower extremities and genitalia, fused to his torso. Despite the incompletely developed twin, the newborn boy was otherwise fully developed. The parasitic twin, attached to the boy, had its own heart and lungs, yet they shared a liver and a significant portion of their circulatory system. Medical professionals are optimistic about the possibility of successfully separating the twins, although they acknowledge the procedure will be intricate and demanding. Himalayas Singh, a 28-year-old woman, experienced an unexpected turn of events during her delivery. Without having undergone any ultrasound scans throughout her pregnancy and with plans for a home birth, she was rushed to the hospital after enduring a day of labor pains without the baby's arrival. Her husband, who earns his living on a daily wage, took her to owned women's hospital in Rajasthan. There, she gave birth to the baby boy, who weighed 8 pounds and 1 ounce, in the early hours. The sight of the baby, with the parasitic twin attached, was startling to both Hemolatus and the medical team. Dr. Singh, a professor of pediatrics at the hospital, identified the occurrence as a rare instance of a parasitic twin. He noted that while the twins have separate hearts, they share an internal mammary artery, adding a layer of complexity to the potential separation surgery. However, the prognosis for the baby is promising, and plans for surgery are being carefully considered with the help of cardiologists, aiming for a time when the baby's condition is stable. Parasitic twinning occurs due to an incomplete separation of embryos during the early stages of pregnancy, leading to the dominance of one embryo's development over the other. This results in one twin being underdeveloped and entirely dependent on the other for survival, distinguishing it from conjoined twins, where both twins are usually more fully formed. The phenomenon of multiple births, including twins, triplets, and beyond, carries a higher risk of complications during pregnancy and childbirth, with a notable likelihood of premature delivery. Historically, the rate of multiples increased with the advent of fertility treatments, though modern practices aim to reduce the chances of multiple pregnancies. Each baby in such pregnancies requires dedicated medical specialists to manage potential complications and provide specialized care immediately after birth. With twins being relatively common, 
and the odds of identical twins occurring at about 1 in 250, the medical community remains vigilant in managing the unique challenges presented by multiple births, including the rare occurrence of parasitic twins that I in the process of childbirth involving twins. The initial twin plays a crucial role in dilating the cervix and preparing the birth canal for delivery. This process tends to proceed smoothly if the first twin is positioned with its head pointing downwards, ready for a standard vaginal birth. However, complications may arise if the first twin presents in a breech position, with feet or buttocks pointing downwards. In such scenarios, the complexities of delivering vaginally increase significantly, often necessitating a surgical approach through a cesarean section to ensure the safety of both mother and child. Following the birth of the first twin, the second twin typically makes its entrance into the world within a short span of 15 minutes, assuming the first has been delivered vaginally and the second is also in a favorable head-down position. In these cases, a vaginal birth for the second twin is generally achievable. There are instances, however, where the position of the second twin may not be optimal for a straightforward vaginal birth. Medical practitioners might then intervene, attempting to gently rotate the baby within the uterus to a more suitable position for delivery. Despite these efforts, certain situations may still necessitate a cesarean section for the second twin's birth. In exceptionally rare circumstances, particularly when the first twin is delivered prematurely, the onset of contractions may halt, potentially delaying the birth of the second twin by days or even weeks. When it comes to the delivery of triplets, the initial baby often arrives via a vaginal birth without notable issues. The subsequent deliveries, however, might require more intricate medical interventions or a cesarean section to ensure their safe arrival, with many obstetricians advocating for a cesarean section for all three babies to minimize risks. For pregnancies involving quadruplets or more, the recommendation strongly leans towards a cesarean section. This approach is advised to safeguard the health and well-being of both the mother and her babies, considering the increased risks and complexities associated with multiple births. That's all about our story, if you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next story.